Well, we're back uh, on air here, and if you're just tuning in, you're watching uh, KTV2, the family channel. And our guest this evening right here on Hela Kuwait, we have with us uh, Dr. Jim Krupe. And uh, Dr. Jim is the founder of the Middle East Leadership Academy, Mila. Dr. Jim, we'd like to welcome you to the program and also to the state of Kuwait. Thank you very much. Nice to have you with us uh, right here on Hela Kuwait. And maybe we could start out, uh, Doctor, by please informing our audience a little bit about the Middle East Leadership Academy. Uh, when were you established, your goals and objectives, please? Sure. We started, uh, we ran our first academy in uh, March of 2010, and we ran three the first year, and then we run one every year. And we hand-pick people from 13 countries in the region. So now March 10th, uh, uh, March in 2010. That's correct. Where was that? Which country? The first country we had it in was in Jordan, in Amman. Okay. Then the second one we went to Egypt, at Sharm el Sheikh. The third one we went to Abu Dhabi. The fourth one we went to uh, Muscat. The fifth one we went to Doha. And this is the sixth one here in Kuwait. So some beautiful uh, destinations in the Arabian uh, countries. And uh, now tell us, you said you hand pick some of the uh, participants and so forth. How is that done? And tell us a little bit more about sure. Mila, please. Well, we have a selection process, but M what Mila does, Mila is looking for the up-and-coming uh, young leaders in the region. And, uh, and we try to bring them in and then put them through a, a very intense 10-day leadership program. And when I say intense, I mean intense. It goes from like 9 in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. Uh, yeah, and you were telling me before we came on air that this is actually the first uh, stop out of the hotel that you've been here in the that, state of Kuwait. So that's, that's it's a very right. hectic it's, schedule it's, that you have. Yeah, it, very, it is. It is. But every day is like opening up a present. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, uh, it's very different. This is, Mila is not your normal leadership development program. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the people that go through Mila say it's life changing. And when you finish Mila, you then are part of a network. And right now we've had 200 people that have come into the Mila network. Uh, you're also going to be hooked up to other networks. We have a network in Central Eurasia of nine countries. We have another network in South and Southeast Asia of nine countries. There's an American network. So what we like to say is when you come to Mila, and let's say you have 30 people that are going through the program, uh, when you finish, your network is not 30 people, but it's five, 600 people because each one of us have about 20 people. And then when you finish, you're, you join all these other networks automatically. So after 10 days, your network reach is 20,000 people across the world. Mm -hmm. And part of what we're trying to do is accelerate the leadership development of these up and coming. The, the average age is in mid 30s. Um, and so what we do is we take them through this program. And if you look at what we do, there's basically several modules. So the first module is all about self-discovery because okay. we believe you can't lead anybody if you don't know who you are. Okay. And then the second module is, okay, how do you lead a team of people? That means understanding who they are, how mm -hmm. do you take them in a new direction, and how you how accelerate. To relate to them. And yeah, and how you increase their productivity, how you mm -hmm. get clear messages so they can focus, how they understand their purpose, etc. And then, now that you've done a team, how do you do an organization? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it's collections of teams. And then once you do that, how do you go regional? How do you go global? Okay, so. so that's what we're about. Okay, so tell us a little bit about uh, this week in the state of Kuwait. I think you've had now about a week or so, another yeah. maybe three, four days remaining. How has this uh, week been so far in Kuwait? Fantastic. I Excellent. mean. Good to hear. It, it, it is. I mean, it's, uh, like I said, this program is very intense. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, while pe they're long days, I think if you were to talk to the people, at the end of the day, the, the one phrase that they all say is it's life changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're coming in from, di from 13 different countries and they're meeting people that are like them, up and coming leaders, and they don't know each other. But when they finish, they have strong bonds, you know, a friendship, and all networks worth anything are built on trust. Mm -hmm. And so they, they come out with this trusted network and that network expands and keeps expanding. And as they grow in their careers, 
that network will allow them to accelerate their business development, their personal development. There are things we follow up with after they finish. Such as, what is that? Uh, well, we have programs. We like we get together. We have a summit every year, so okay. all the people that have been through Excellent. all the milas come together, and we do educational programs. We set up meetings that they can go to. Different the, destinations around the world, or is it the same different place destination is it? in the in the region okay. for mila? Okay. So we we rotate around mm -hmm. uh, because we're a regional network, mm -hmm. right? We're not any one particular country. Mm -hmm. uh, and what makes mila unique? is all the speakers, all we have facilitators. These are executives who spend two weeks of their lives. They pay their way to come here on their own. Mm -hmm. they, they're successful business executives. They are here to do one thing, and that is to share everything they've ever learned about business, everything they've ever learned about leadership with this up and coming group because we take the big group and divide it into small groups where it's really intense. We have these learning groups every day that meet. Okay. So Tell us a little bit more about that now, uh, how the progression of days go and until you come towards the end of the 10 day. Uh, so tell us like an average normal day. You said like it's usually starting around nine till about nine. Tell us how that day goes. Well, there's no average normal day. Okay. Every, every, I mean, every day is different okay. even though they're long, okay? But I'll give you an example of what a day would be sure, like. Sure, sure. Um, so the group would come in around 9 o'clock in the morning and they might hear a, a lecture discussion about, let's say, team building. But all these things are highly interactive, right? There's, th this is not about books. All the people who are faculty are all business people. We, we don't have academics that are teaching. These are all people, so everything is practical. People that are in the field actually, executives in their own right in whatever th field they may be in. Exactly, so, so they would go through this experience, okay? And then they would take a break and then they would hear another session. Then you'd have lunch, by that the morning's over, and they would go into an exercise so, for example, the other day, we took them through it. The minute they walked into the room, they were inside of a company. Okay. And that company operated under certain conditions for the next four hours. By the end of that session, the group had increased their productivity by 1,800%. Wow. And now they look back and say, okay. how did that happen? Yeah. And it's all about leadership dynamics. It's mm -hmm. all about team building, mm -hmm. okay? They come out of that, they go to dinner. After that, they get to choose one or two sessions that they're going through, okay? So yesterday, the, they had two sessions to choose from. Okay. One was on what should a leader understand about finance. The okay. other was on how do you build an effective business plan. Okay. Tonight, they will be going to one on how do you build a brand, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so you, you, I mean, you have these different pieces. There'll be another choice that, that they have you know, how do you take social media and use it in a digital marketing world? Excellent. Okay. Uh, and the people that are running those are uh -huh. CEOs of their own companies from the region. All right. Okay. So this is a partnership uh, between, you know, Arab business leaders and a few Americans that are just interested in helping develop beyond the development they already have, because these are leaders anyway. Mm -hmm. It's so just, how have you found uh, the participants here in the state of Kuwait? Well, we're, we're biased, but the good news is because we select these yes, people, their hand chosen, we get say. really good people. Top-notch uh, Top people. Top-notch people. And some of, the, I mean, some of these people have been to Harvard and things like that, but you know what? They will tell you that Mila is different. Mila is more dynamic. Mm -hmm. Mila is unique in anything they've ever done. Mm -hmm. So um, we feel good about that. I mean, there's a lot of interaction. There's peer-to-peer -peer learning because we have, because we have such good leaders okay. already. Yeah. We're able to share what we know. So, for example, you would be in a group, and let's say you have certain strengths, I have certain weaknesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to learn your strengths sure. because we're going to put you in something that's designed to bring that out, as opposed to somebody standing up and saying... Okay. So you kind yeah. of know like the resume of each uh, participant, 
and kind of, let's say, tailor make certain uh, part of the exercise for everyone? Is that a little we, bit? We, we design in what we know about them okay. in, in groups that we put them in. And it's not just resumes. Okay. We give them personality inventories and uh -huh. things like that mm -hmm. because it's, it really is about self-discovery and how you, you know, we have a thing, you know, if I took away your title, would they follow you? Okay. Because your title doesn't mean you're a leader. All right. It just means you have a title. Mm -hmm. And what were people's reply to that? It well, their reply is almost like at first it's kind of like deer in headlights. Yes. Like would they really? Yes. You know, and then we're trying to get them to really think about because that. Because some things can be, uh, Dr. Jim, a little cultural things that can be a little bit sometimes different. In that I way. I understand, but at the end of the day, in spite of the culture, uh -huh. right? Whether you have a title or not, may, if you have a title, it means you have, the, you have a position that has been designated as a leadership position. Sure. That doesn't mean you're a leader. Right, exactly. Okay, so for them, we want them examining if that title went away, would I naturally follow you? Could you get me to naturally follow you? Do they have if, those qualities of a leader. In a absolutely. Attributes, let's Right. Say. Um, and another thing we, we asked them, one of the questions we posed to them is, what's your purpose? I mean, why are you here? Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do with your life? Mm -hmm. How are you going to maximize that? Mm -hmm. You know, are you really going to die with all your music in you? Mm -hmm. You know, can you, can you go through life and say, oh, if only I had, mm -hmm. oh, I wish I had, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So uh, it, it's, it's very, there's this kind of mix of, you know, deep penetration into who you are so that you understand how you maximize the value you have as a leader mm -hmm. combined with the technical aspects of leadership mm -hmm. and the skills that you need and some of the things you also need to understand about organizations and systems and business. Uh, but e every day is a different day Every day is unique, but everything is designed for a purpose. Every single session, mm -hmm. the flow of those sessions, the impact of those sessions, mm -hmm. what the topics are. So by the end, uh, you, you, you have changed. There is no doubt about it. Great. You have changed. And you now, we had, a, we had an executive. Uh -huh. um, from Oman. Okay. And he, here's what he said. He said, I sent one person to Harvard, one person to Stanford, and one person to Mila. Okay. The Harvard and Stanford people came back and hung their diplomas on the wall. Okay. The Mila person came in and changed the company. Wow. And That's we really hear good. that all the time. Mm -hmm. it, I, I think one of the challenges we have is convincing people that we're not just your normal leadership training program that people are used to going to and going to a class and sitting in a class and well, listening day and just and listening yes, to yes. somebody talk and right, all that right. because, you know, 80, 90% of what we do is experiential and done by practitioners in the field. Mm -hmm. And one of the strongest parts of our whole program is this facilitator group, this group of 15 executives that pay their own way here, mm -hmm. spend the entire two weeks with them, okay. are in the small groups. It's almost like you having a one-on-one -on -one mentor with somebody that's built a company, knows how to scale, has years and years of leadership. And, uh, and you get that every single day. And if there's a problem you have that you're dealing with at work or, mm -hmm. or something that you're concerned about as a leader, mm -hmm. well, you can have lunch with them. You can have dinner with them. You can say, I'd like to meet with you, sure, in addition sure. to being in the small group. Um, I think people come out and the small groups, they say, these people are my brothers and sisters. Mila is my family. Excellent. That's great. It's, it's, it's very interesting. And I think, sir, also uh, sponsors play a big role in supporting and helping out the numerous activities. Maybe you'd like to shed some light on that, too. Yeah. We, we're a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. so we need sponsors. And we have been very fortunate here in Kuwait uh, that the Kuwait Oil Company 
and KOC, Shell Kuwait, yeah. KOC and Shell Kuwait, um, and the Jumeirah Hotel, Beach Hotel, mm -hmm. are our three primary sponsors here. Um, when we go to different other places, they, we also have some, but there's absolute, we could not do this if there weren't enlightened leaders who, who basically say, I want to give back. I want to invest in the next generation that's coming up. And, you know, and they do it. And, uh, and the way we look at it is they're entrusting us um, with the development of their best talent mm -hmm. and the talent that doesn't even come from companies that they are part of. You know, so, I mean, there are people here from uh, Saudi Arabia, there are people here from the Emirates, there are people here from Qatar, there are people here from Egypt, there are people here from Jordan, there are people here from Kuwait, okay? And these enlightened leaders are saying, you know what, that's the future. The net, uh, uh, the future is all about networking and relationships mm -hmm. and how you build these bonds of trust across the region and across the world. Mm -hmm. And if we can help accelerate that, that's what we're going to do. And that's what they've done. And if it wasn't for them, we couldn't do what we do. And is it a possibility to have more of these uh, activities here in the state of Kuwait? Is that something down yeah. the road? Or do you have a set format that you must follow or does can things change as let's say demand is needed things can change uh, -huh. uh we don't have a set format but we we have been committed to rotating this program around the region and we also have these summits where we bring everybody together mm -hmm. we do that once a year at a different time of the year and we rotate those out there because it could very well be that we would come back to kuwait and have a summit or as we have uh, people that have gone through the program here, we'd arrange certain events, like maybe we'd have uh, an interview with 30 people with the, C the CEO of one of the companies who would mm -hmm. sit down for an hour and say, you know what, when I was your age, this is the way I thought about leadership, but today, sure. this is what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Here's a mistake I made. Here's how not to repeat that mistake. Yes. You know, that kind of thing on a one-on-one, -on -one, leader to leader. Wisdom, life wisdom. Exactly, exactly. That's well, really great to hear. And, and Dr. Jim, as we're coming towards the end of our interview uh, this evening right here on Hela Kuwait, uh, any last bit of words or advice for the young people out there, the young entrepreneurs, uh, businessmen and women who may be watching uh, the program this evening? Follow your dream. Don't let anybody get in the way of it. Be absolutely convinced you can do it if you think you can. Don't let anybody tell you no. Don't tell yourself no and then say, well, I couldn't get it done because they wouldn't let me. Mm -hmm. No. Most people say, I don't know if I could do that and they stop themselves. So don't do that, you know. Do what you love. And be passionate about it. Absolutely. And build relationships with people that you can trust so you can accelerate the development of that dream because none of us do anything alone. Very well said. And we do appreciate your time with us. We know you have a very busy schedule <laughs> and a short time here in the state of Kuwait. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your stay right here in Kuwait. Thank you, Tariq. Thank you very much Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. It was our Thank you pleasure. for having me. Our pleasure, sir. And we were talking to... Uh, uh, Dr. Jim Krupe and Dr. Jim is the founder of the Middle East Leadership Academy, Mila. And uh, we wish uh, Dr. Jim and his colleagues all the best of luck in their future endeavors. Right now, we're going to take a short break and then be back with you to wrap up tonight's episode of Ella Kuwait. Stay tuned.